Linear Perspective This lecture is intended to introduce you to the basics of linear perspective. Linear perspective is a system used by artists for creating the illusion of three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional surface. There are some basic terms you should know. Horizon line, this is the same as your eye level. Vanishing point, you can have one, two, three, or more vanishing points in a perspective drawing. Orthogonal lines, these are lines that are parallel, but because of the effect of perspective will converge at a vanishing point. And transversal lines, lines that intersect those orthogonals. Rules of perspective. There are three rules of perspective. One, parallel lines converge. Two, foreshortening, and three, size diminution. When drawing in perspective, it will be extremely helpful to understand and remember this first point. Any line that is parallel on the object will converge at the same point. In this one point perspective view of a chessboard, one set of lines is facing the viewer, so they remain parallel to one another and to the picture plane while the second set of parallel lines is traveling back in space and converges at a single point. This point will always fall on the horizon line. When viewing the chessboard from one of its corners, we see it in a two-point perspective view. Now each set of parallel lines travels back in space to a separate vanishing point. Foreshortening. Foreshortening happens when an object is receding in space, distorting its proportions. Look at these two chess pieces. They are the same, but the one tipped over appears foreshortened and to have different proportions than its identical pair, which is standing. The same effect happens with the squares on the chessboard. The squares become much shorter than they are wide, as they turn back in space. Another example of foreshortening are the arrows you see on the road at an intersection. The shape anticipates foreshortening and appears to be a normal arrow pointing straight or turning, although in reality it's stretched out to compensate for the angle of foreshortening at which the viewer will see it. Size diminution. Objects will appear smaller as they go back in space. The exact same object will appear larger when it's closer to you and smaller when it's further away. This also applies to a single object. The closer side of the object will appear larger than the farther side. One, two, and three point perspective. Linear perspective drawings are typically done in one, two, or three-point perspective, and each are good for different reasons. One point is the simplest, as all lines converge to a single point. This can be helpful in illustrating a simple form or showing the interior of a room, but it has its limitations too. You'll find it difficult to illustrate objects that have complex information on two sides this way. So two-point perspective can be useful when drawing a piece of furniture, for example, that you'd like to see more than one side of at the same time, or a building. One-point drawings can be beautiful, but quite limiting compared with the two-point perspective drawing. Here are some other drawings done in two-point perspective. In some, you can see the trace lines, and I want to point out how often complex forms start out as a simple box. This is how we'll approach drawing complex forms as well creating a box, and then chiseling away or adding to them. Three-point, also known as bird's eye or worm's eye view, is best illustrated in an image like this, where you're viewing something from a station point far above or below it. It's more complex to draw this way, so when it isn't absolutely necessary, two-point perspective will suffice. In reality, we see in far more than two or three points. 
New sets of vanishing points exist with the rotation of each object, and it's entirely likely that one-point and two-point objects could exist in the same space. In drawing and design, we have to be strategic about how many vanishing points to include. And typically, the fewest number that can still communicate your idea is the best. Extremely complex forms can be rendered in two-point perspective. And although we won't get as complicated as all of this, you could. You could start with an overhead view, plot the station point of a viewer, and the exact distance an object would be from them, and determine the two vanishing points based off the orientation of the form. It's worth talking about this last point just a little bit more. If there's a second form oriented differently, like in this chest of drawers drawn in two-point perspective where the drawer on top is rotated differently. And by the way, this other drawer on the floor is facing us, so it's actually in one-point perspective. But anyway, the second form's new rotation would call for a second set of vanishing points. It's a little more complicated than this, but you get the idea. So with each rotation, tilt, or change to an object, expect the parallel lines on that object to converge at a new set of vanishing points. As you try your own hand at drawing in linear perspective, you'll find that once you've mastered the rules, the possibilities are endless, whether you're designing from your imagination or drawing from observation. Understanding the rules of linear perspective will help you create images that allow you to communicate more succinctly and successfully.